I do enjoy winter hiking, so I thought I'd show you how I pack my overnight lightweight winter hiking backpack. Let's go. Okay, I have a selection of all of my hiking gear for the winter behind me, um, and as well as my Atom Packs Atom Plus, which is a 40 litre backpack. Custom made, it's got an extra two inches on the top, so maybe it's about 43 litres in total. But first, uh, let's talk about the worn weight, because in winter I'm gonna be wearing a jacket, and the jacket it can actually hold a few items as well, so it's quite important to know where to put these items, especially uh, when you're hiking in the winter, because you're gonna need certain things to hand. So uh, this is a dare to be kind of ski jacket kind of thing. It's got a waterproof mid layer. The outer is like a, a woven nylon. It's a very comfortable, very well fitted jacket. I bought it in Go Outdoors for about 50 quid. I think it was down from 160, so it's a really, really good deal. Uh, but basically the way that I've got everything in these pockets is the most important pocket on this jacket is this breast pocket down here. And inside the breast pocket, I've got my compass, which is uh, threaded through the zipper kind of bit there, and then you, you've always got that to hand. That's always in the breast pocket here on the front. Um, also in here, I've got some Carmex lip salve kind of gel, which is also really handy in the winter, stop your lips chapping. Um, and also, I've got my iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is uh, really important to me because I'm a YouTuber and I like to go out into the wild and film lots of things. So that's where I keep my phone. It's really good to keep the phone close to your body because in sub-zero temperatures when you're out there in the hills, I've even had an iPhone freeze on me before and uh, it's completely messed up the screen. So uh, keeping your phone close to your body will stop it freezing um, and stop it breaking. So that's really good. In the waist pockets on the right hand side, I've got a pair of gloves. So when I'm just about to start trekking, I usually have these in my jacket uh, ready to go. So. I don't have to have my gloves on straight away when I'm putting my pack together. And on the left side, I've got my sunglasses, which are a pair of sun gods. And I've also got my Aquamira drops. I keep them close to my body and in my pockets to stop the chemicals freezing. They can thaw out and you can use them once they're thawed out, but I don't like the thought of these freezing. I only use drops when I'm winter hiking because if you bring a water filter and that freezes, it's completely uh, screwed. You can't use it again, it's broken, you have to replace it. And the thought of a water filter freezing on me out there in the snow and in the ice, it really doesn't appeal. And the last thing inside the left pocket is a set of headphones, so I can always grab those and they're to hand. So that's what's in the jacket. So for warm weight, I'll have a base layer on first and have this on top. Uh, and then I have obviously a pair of socks. If I'm mountaineering, I will bring proper boots and crampons, but this is a lightweight kit list. This is more for lower graded walking as opposed to mountaineering um, with really steep icy slopes. So I stick with trail runners and micro spikes, but I'll show you these spikes in just a moment. On top of the base layer, I'll have some uh, kind of wind trousers. These aren't waterproof. Uh, you could have some waterproof uh, plastic ones, but these are a lot warmer. Um, so hopefully it doesn't rain too much and get these soaked, but these are what I like to wear just for a like, added bit of warmth. I also have this Berghaus hat, which is really warm, but really light, very thin. And it goes on, and it goes over my ears. It's just enough when you've got your hoods on and everything like that. You don't, I don't like carrying a really big, bulky, heavy hat. There's just no need. A nice thin one is all you need. And on top of the trail runners, I'll have a pair of gaiters as well. The trousers help to stop snow getting in, but I like to wear a set of gaiters as well to really stop the snow getting into my shoes and making my feet completely soaked. Yes, with trail runners, my feet do get wet, but while I'm walking, my feet aren't cold. With boots, I find your feet are gonna get wet anyway. If you're going in really slushy snow and the snow's getting into your boots, you know, you're gonna get wet feet anyway. Maybe not as quickly, but if you want them to dry out, they're gonna take absolutely ages. But again, for mountaineering and really steep icy slopes, I'd have boots on and crampons and have all the proper traction footwear that I needed. Okay, so that's all the worn weight pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the backpack, start putting stuff in, and I'll show you exactly how I pack my lightweight winter hiking backpack. So here's the Atom Plus. It's 40 something liters, custom made. Uh, it's not waterproof on the outer. So what we need to do is get a DCF pack liner, which is also made specifically for this backpack and its shape. So it's got the two inches added on the top, which I just, which I mentioned earlier. So we're gonna get the DCF pack liner, and just shove that in. DCF is an ultra strong, lightweight material. It's waterproof, 
This pack liner is seam sealed. It's a very good quality material. It's really good that Atom Packs do that for their backpacks so you can get the exact same size and shape pack liner for your backpack. You could get a third party one or use a really cheap rubble sack, but it won't be specifically made for the size and shape of this pack. Okay, so that's the pack liner in. So the first thing that we're gonna get is my 15 degree Katabatic Gear Sawatch sleeping quilt. It's made of down, really soft material, really high quality, very strong. 15 degree Fahrenheit is about minus 10 Celsius. So uh, that's pretty good for a really lightweight winter hiking quilt. So we're just gonna stuff that in first. First thing that we put in, because it's down, it's gonna scrunch down really well, and push all the air out. Be gentle when you're doing it. You don't wanna rip any of the seams or anything like that. Just shove it in, that's the first thing. The reason why I put the uh, sleeping quilt in first is because it's the thing that I want to take out last and it's the thing that I want to keep dry the most. What a lot of people do is they use a packing pod to stuff it in there. It comes with a sill nylon stuff sack but um, I like to just put it straight into the DCF pack liner. It's going to stay dry in there, that's what the pack liner is there for. But anything else that I put on top, all of the negative space is going to be taken up by that down that's going to kind of shove into all the nooks and crannies. So just putting it straight into the pack liner is the best way to go. There we go, that's what the pack looks like so far. The, the quilt has basically taken up about this much room of the backpack so far. So we're not even halfway filled yet. This is a really good backpack. The roll down top allows you to really change up the height of the backpack depending on what you've got inside. So that's the quilt in, looking really good. Next up is my Z-Pack Solplex tent. This is a three season tent. Yes, you could get a four season freestanding tent, but I like to go as light as possible. I'll plan ahead look at the campsites that are available and make sure that there's somewhere suitable and sheltered for me to camp in this very lightweight tent. It's made out of DCF so it's very strong and it will hold up to a windstorm but in the winter you want to make sure that you've got a really good pitch and this thing in any breeze isn't going to fall down. So that goes in on top of the quilt and at the back towards the back panel, just like that. Okay, next up is the only dry bag that I use and that is full of clothes. So it's got some spare socks, some spare underwear, spare set of gloves, um, a couple of other bits, some gingy socks in there. Uh, it's got a spare top base layer as well. Uh, the base layer that I'm using is a dare to be one. And the other one that's in here is a uh, merino wool one, which is really light and really packable. So if I do get wet, and I get to camp, I've always got a spare change of clothes ready for me. So that goes in front of the tent and on top of the quilt, just like that. So now we've got, we've got the quilt coming up to here and then we've got the tent at the back and the dry bag with extra clothes in at the front. And now we've got another flat platform just here to start packing more stuff on top too. So I'll just put the pack back down on the floor. Now we've got like flat platform to be putting things on top of. I then get my uh, OP sack, which is full of food. So it's got some adventure food, some coffee sachets, it's got my spoon, uh, it's got some noodles and things like that. So because that's quite a flat piece of kit, that's then gonna kinda go on top of the tent and the clothes bag, just like this. Really push it down. Still got plenty of room in this backpack. Okay, because it's winter, insulation is really important, so I've got an extra down puffy jacket. This is a Trespass Rustler. I've had it for ages. Starting to smell a little bit, but we're just going to kind of stuff this in and around the food bag because if we get a bit chilly, we've always got this closer to the top so I don't have to dig all the way down after the food bag and everything in the tent. You know, it's not the most needed layer that I've got, but it's there. It's in the middle. And if I need to grab it out, it's not too far. And I'll tell you why we'll put it there in just a second. Okay, so that's the extra down puffy jacket in. And next up, we're gonna get uh, my kind of miscellaneous bag, which has got an inhaler, a uh, set of tweezers, some nail clippers, eye drops. It's got some sun cream in case it's really sunny and you've got loads of snow coming up in your face. Um, toothbrush, toothpaste, all of the kind of essential bits. That then goes in next in case I need those. So they're quite close to the top of the pack. Next up is my electronics bag. So that's got my Sony RX100 camera, a little mini tripod. It's got my power bank, uh, a charging brick as well. Everything that I need, all the chargers for my phone, for my headlamp, everything like that, that all goes in. So we're just gonna scrunch that up into a sausage shape and then put that towards the back of the bag. So that's like at the top of the frame now. So we're pretty much at the top of the frame now, which is uh, pretty good. All of the heavy stuff is towards the back panel of the bag. And we've still got plenty of room, probably about another six or seven litres of room to go for this bag. 
Okay, so when I'm hiking, when I first set off, I don't wear all of my layers at once. I mean, I've got my buff on to keep my neck warm, my base layer, and then I'll have my outer shell ready to go. And when I start walking, you're usually on an approach trail or something like that that's a bit lower. Um, and you're already pretty warm and you don't want to be sweating as soon as you set off. So I tend to put the insulating layers at the top of the pack so that as I'm going around and walking, if I do start to get nippy, I can layer up, which is much better than layering down when you're halfway through a hike. You don't want to have to start sweating and start taking things off. It just takes a lot more time. So we're going to start putting all the insulation stuff in. Um, the first thing is my fleece mid layer. So that will go on top of the base layer. It's just a really cheap synthetic fleece from Go Outdoors. I think it costs 10 quid. So that's going to go on the top just like that. There we go. Nearly full. Next up is my Patagonia Micro Puff hoodie. So I've got two insulating puffy jackets pretty much. But this is my favourite one and it's the lightest one. So I'm just going to put that next to the fleece. And you can stuff that down the sides, down the back. Take up all that negative space. Really shove it in there. And the last thing, just in case, it really starts to chuck it down. I've got an extra outer layer shell, which is just for if it really starts bucketing it down. Um, all the water on this jacket will kind of seep through the outer layer of material. But these frog tugs will allow the water to just run off. So it's just an extra layer, just in case it starts really chucking it down. I can put that on top of my original shell, my Dare to Be jacket, just in case is that added bit of protection from the wind and the rain. There we go, so that's that's the last thing that goes in, pretty much in the main compartment of the backpack. So there we go, we're pretty much here now on the backpack. Coming up there, I've got about seven or eight inches more of room, but we need that to roll the top down and make sure that this pack is packed properly. So, okay, so that's everything that's going on the inside of the pack. Got there in the end, now we're gonna do the two poppers up on the DCF pack liner, and then we're going to do up the side release buckle clips on the pack liner, and then we're going to roll that down best we can, really shove it down, and then we're going to get the two poppers on the backpack, on the outer backpack, the main body, and then we're going to get the side release buckle clips, get that nice and tidy, just like that, and roll that down, and hey presto, that's that, I'm going to get the wire strap, do that up over the top, really cinch that down. Right, so that's everything inside the backpack on the main compartment. It's getting a bit hot in here, so I'm gonna take this jacket off now. Oh, I can actually breathe while I'm doing this. There we go. Right, so in the front pocket, the first thing that I'm gonna put in there is my map. Now the map I've put in a Ziploc bag to keep it dry. If I had a smaller map, I'd put that in the breast pocket on the inside of my jacket to keep that dry. But because it's a larger map, that's just gonna go First into the front pocket, just like that. Next up in goes my Thermarest Neo Air x -Lite sleeping pad. Uh, it's a really good pad, it's gonna lift you off the cold icy ground, so it's gonna keep you warm at night. Really cool sleeping pad, and that just goes in the front pocket next to the mat, just like that. Next up in the front pocket is my poop kit, and that's basically uh, some hygiene bags to put some wet wipes in once I've used them, some toilet roll, Bit of body glide, uh, I'll put that in with the poop kit just for hygiene reasons. The antibacterial hand gel and also my juice of space trowel so I can dig a hole if I need to do my business. That goes in on the right hand side. Next up in the front pocket goes my stove and that just goes kind of in the middle, just like that in front of the mat. And finally in the front pocket goes my micro spikes and they're in these cool little kind of heavy duty little stuff sack. Uh, they kind of ball up really small. Really cool piece of kit. And I'll put these on top of my trail runners as soon as I start hitting the snow. But in that goes, that goes on the top, in the front pocket just like that. So if I pull this up and show you. So we've got the map in first, and then we've got my Thermarest Neo Air x Light. I prefer to put that on the outside of the pack because it creates a lot of negative space on the inside of the pack. As you can see, this backpack is nice, cylindrical, evenly spaced. If I put the Thermarest Neo in there, it's just makes it more difficult to pack and makes it a bit more uncomfortable so that's why that's there. Then I've got my stove just here underneath the micro spikes. I've got my poop kit on that side and the micro spikes on the top so that is the front pocket. Good to go. Looking really snazzy. Okay next which I should have put on a little bit earlier is my sit pad. Usually I'll have this inside the front pocket but it doesn't quite fit in the front pocket with the micro spikes and the extra map and all the other stuff inside so I'm going to undo the wire strap once more get a bit longer and then I'll put the side release buckle clip together and then cinch that down and there's the sit pad 
ready for when I need to sit down. Okay, so now that's everything inside the front pocket and the main compartment, sit pad on the top. Uh, now what we're gonna do is put the ice axe on. This pack has a ice axe loop on the bottom just here and uh, it's also got a blue piece of cord here with a line lock adjuster for really cinching it tight into the backpack, which is great. Uh, usually I use this to keep my trekking poles tidy, but because we've got quite a hefty pack, I don't want the axe to be kind of sticking out at the front here. So I'm gonna do, put the ice axe in through the loop, just like this. So it goes in pointy end first like this, through the loop, and then we bend it round to the side. Then what I do is grab that blue piece of cord and then tighten it up just like that. And there you go, that's the ice axe attached to the backpack just like that. It ain't gonna wobble around, it ain't gonna go anywhere. It's nice and tidy. Ice axe done. We'll put the pack on the floor now. Next up, I'm gonna put my trekking poles. Trekking poles are black diamond alpine carbon corks. Really cool little trekking pole. What I've made sure I've got on them is my snow baskets that they just screw on. Uh, it doesn't come with these fitted, but it comes with them in the box. What I do when I'm packing these is I put them in handle end down first, because the uh, snow baskets will stop you putting it in. And you don't want sharp, pointy ends going into the bottom of the pack and putting a hole in them. So I'm gonna put these in. I'll put them through the uh, elastic cord first. On the same side as the ice axe. Through all the elastic cords, just like that. Into the side pocket. And there you go. Trekking poles are in. In the pocket. Nice and tidy. They're not gonna go anywhere. So if I need them, I can just take them out. Nice and easy. Nice and simple. Now we've got the right hand side pocket done, but now we're gonna do the left side. So what I tend to put in those is my aluminium temp stakes. Uh, they're gonna be covered in mud, sand, grit and dirt. I don't wanna put those inside the pack. So they go in the left side pocket. Next up, I'm gonna put my kind of heavy duty water bottle. You can put hot water in this. So if it's really chilly at night, you can boil some water, put some hot water in that and then put it in your sleeping bag with you. Uh, it's not gonna burst. It's got a seal on the inside really good for that so I'm gonna put that in there and then what's really good about this pack is that it's got the elasticated cord on the other side so you can put that around the edge of the bottle and that ain't gonna go anywhere you can bend over absolutely fine no problem next in that side when I put my uh, rubbish bag this is a rubble sack I don't like using really cheap plastic bags because you can reuse these heavy duty you can empty them keep putting things in and out of them really good for that so I'm gonna put that next to the tent stakes okay so that's the side pockets done Trekker poles, ice axe on that side, ice axe in the loops, and then you've got your water bottle there and my tent stakes, that's all good. Next what we're gonna do is the shoulder pockets, which are a really cool feature of this pack and you can keep things really close to hand. On the left shoulder strap pocket, I'm gonna put my 600 ml water bottle. So I've got two bottles of water. So there it goes, and you've got this little lip, so you can even put your phone in there, 600 ml water bottle fits in there perfectly. On the right shoulder pocket, I can then either put some snacks in there, but what I sometimes do is put my headlamp in there. This is an Olight H2R Nova, really good long range headlamp, perfect for walking, really good for winter conditions, and it's got an SOS beacon on it as well. Uh, so you can use, <laughs> hopefully not have to use it, but yeah, I'm gonna put this in the right shoulder pocket, just like that. And then for snacks and stuff, I then use my favorite pocket on this pack, which is the bottom pocket, and the snacks literally, in there. And what's really cool is it's got a little notch here with a little hole so you can put your rubbish in there and your empty snack packets and things like that so they're not going to blow away as if they were if you put them in one of the side pockets. Okay we are very nearly done now so I'm going to put the pack back on the floor. One of the last things to go in is in the hip belt pocket I'm going to put my spare batteries. Uh, it's got some little wind mufflers for my camera and a SD card reader. So if I want to back up any photos onto my phone, I can do that. So that goes into one of the hip belt pockets on the left. In the right hand hip belt pocket, I'm going to put my wallet and my keys. I just like to have them in the hip belt pocket when I'm walking, just because I'm like, have I got it on me? And I always end up being like, right, I'm gonna just dive into my pack and check. And the last thing that I wanna do is start whipping things out to see if I've actually remembered my keys and my wallet. So they're gonna go in the right hand hip belt pocket, just like that. So that's the hip belt pocket done. Right, so the last thing that's gonna go on here is my GPS unit. The GPS unit is a Garmin GPS map 66i. You've got really good detailed maps on it. It's rugged, it's good for the winter. It's got an SOS button on it, so if I do get injured or something like that, which I hopefully won't, I've got that port of contact. You can send text messages over a satellite with it. Uh, you have to pay a subscription, which is about 15 quid a month, but it's totally worth it if you're gonna be keeping yourself safe. So to attach this to the backpack, you have to buy this separately, is this kind of little 
dongly thing that's going to uh, stick to the shoulder strap just about here and that's made of velcro so I'm going to put the pack down and plonk that on now. So I'm just going to undo the velcro on this thing now and then wrap it around my left shoulder strap and then I'm going to get this uh, bit of velcro -y bit here and then I'm going to slot that into the GPS unit and that will click in place and then I just simply stick that velcro -y bit onto the shoulder strap and there you have it just lift this bad boy up there you have it that is my complete winter hiking backpack all packed up ready to go i love this backpack everything about it it's just perfect for all four seasons of hiking and yeah it packs everything really well it's just the right size i've got enough food in there i've got enough shelter and warmth in there so yeah there we go folks that is how i pack my winter overnight lightweight hiking backpack there we go then folks thanks for watching that is how i pack my winter hiking lightweight overnight backpack campfire question what do you pack in your winter backpack uh, let us know down below in the comment section the trail hunter community would love to hear from you thank you so much for watching this video thumbs if you liked it subs if you loved it and i'll see you in the next one